Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. However, I can be a supplement to your own scripture study. My focus is to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of those things that are true. I'll be reading and expounding from the Book of Mormon, but we can get into other scriptures at a later time. So today's number is 20 verses. This will be medium, like my little pony. And yes, you can call me a brony because I do like my little pony. Third Nephi, chapter 16. Jesus will visit others of the lost sheep of Israel. In the latter days, the gospel will go to the Gentiles and then to the house of Israel. The Lord's people shall see eye to eye when he brings again Zion. Verse 1. And verily, verily, I say unto you, that I have other sheep, which are not of this land, neither of the land of Jerusalem, neither in any parts of that land round about, whither I have been to minister. For they of whom I speak are they who have not as yet heard my voice, neither have at any time manifested myself unto them. But I have received a commandment of the Father, that I shall go unto them, and that they shall hear my voice and shall be numbered among my sheep, that there may be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore I go to show myself unto them. And I command you that ye shall write these sayings after I am gone, that if it so be that my people at Jerusalem, they who have seen and been with me in my ministry, do not ask the Father in my name, that they may receive a knowledge of you by the Holy Ghost, and also of the other tribes whom they know not of, that these sayings which ye shall write shall be kept and shall be manifested unto the Gentiles, that through the fullness of the Gentiles, the remnant of their seed who shall be scattered forth upon the face of the earth because of their unbelief may be brought in or may be brought to a knowledge of me, their Redeemer. And then will I gather them in from the four quarters of the earth. And then will I fulfill the covenant which the Father hath made unto all the people of the house of Israel. And blessed are the Gentiles because of their belief in me, in and of the Holy Ghost, which witness unto them of me and of the Father. Behold, because of their belief in me, said the Father, and because of the unbelief of you, O house of Israel, in the latter days shall the truth come unto the Gentiles, that the fullness of these things shall be made unto them. But woe, said the Father, unto the unbelieving of the Gentiles, for notwithstanding they have come forth upon the face of this land and have scattered my people who are of the house of Israel, and my people who are of the house of Israel have been cast out from among them and have been trodden underfoot by them. And because of the mercies of the Father unto the Gentiles and also the judgment of the Father upon my people who are of the house of Israel, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that after all this, and I have caused my people who are of the house of Israel to be smitten, and to be afflicted, and to be slain, and to be cast out from among them, and to become hated by them, and to become a hiss and a byword among them. A couple important things to understand here, which goes along with the previous chapter, that the Savior is a good shepherd. He's calling certain groups of people his sheep which are those that believe in him, that worship him and trying to be like him. However, he's calling them different foes because obviously there are different areas that may have different backgrounds, different culture, but that doesn't matter. We may have all those differences, but we're united because of him. So we become a part of the bigger fold, you can say, which is to be a part or called, you can say, his people. Now, along with that, as you can see, the house of Israel was scattered. Now, the thing to keep in mind about the, um, the house of Israel to understand, Jacob, who is a son of Isaac, who is also, and again, Isaac, is a son of Abraham. So with that genealogy, you can say, again, it goes Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob. Now, Jacob was blessed to be given the name Israel. Jacob had 12 sons. You can say 12 tribes or 12 houses. So that's how we get the 12 tribes of Israel. Or you can say the 12 tribes of Jacob or the 12 houses of Jacob 
or the 12 sons of Jacob. So when you think of Israel, you can relate it to Jacob as well, or you can make a distinction of the actual location of Israel. But the point I'm making by bringing up Jacob is to understand that these people here, the Nephites and the Lamanites, are a part of the house of Jacob or the house of Israel as a savior is teaching them. Now, when it comes to the Gentiles, which I am a Gentile again, I've mentioned that previously, but since I'm a Gentile, I'm not a part of the house of Israel. However, again, the Savior is what connects us all together. So since the gospel was brought to the Gentiles, the Gentiles being baptized, now they're, they're considered as a part of that fold. So one big happy family, y'all, one big happy family. But you definitely want to make sure you understand the, the distinction between a Jew and a Gentile. Now, along with that, the Savior also illustrated that he allowed, you can say, the people of the house of Israel to be scattered and to be smitten by the Gentiles because of their unbelief. So basically, God did not preserve them at that point because they were doing wickedness. Now, he's also saying us as Gentiles, now, which is ongoing. But he's specifically saying, you know, the Gentiles received the fullness of the gospel. We received everything. Now they're turning their back on him. So he's going to cause, obviously, things to happen to us Gentiles if we don't repent. So again, there's Jew and Gentile, but we're united together. So now we're becoming one people. I've mentioned this as, as well previously, but I'm going to repeat it again But this, because this is important. The Jews brought the Bible to the Gentiles. Now, the Gentiles received the Book of Mormon. So now the Gentiles are bringing the Book of Mormon to the Jews, and thereby we're uniting together. So the Bible and the Book of Mormon creates the fullness of the gospel. Now, there could be other folds again. There could be other scriptures out there that may come at a later time. But at this present time, the Bible and the Book of Mormon illustrate and complete and give us the fullness of the gospel. Verse 10, and thus commanded the father that I should say unto you at that day when the Gentiles shall sin against my gospel and shall reject the fullness of my gospel and shall be lifted up in the pride of their hearts above all nations and above all the people of the whole earth and shall be filled with all manner of lions and deceits and of mischiefs, and all men of hypocrisy, and murders, and priestcrafts, and whoredoms, and of secret combinations, abominations. And if they shall do all those things, and shall reject the fullness of my gospel, behold, said the Father, I will bring the fullness of my gospel from among them. And then will I remember the covenant which I have made unto my people, O house of Israel, and I will bring my gospel unto them. And I will show unto thee, O house of Israel, that the Gentiles shall not have power over you. But I will remember my covenant unto you, O house of Israel, and ye shall come unto the knowledge of the fullness of my gospel. But if the Gentiles will repent and return unto me, said the Father, behold, they shall be numbered among my people, O house of Israel. And I will not suffer my people, who are of the house of Israel, to go through among them and tread them down said the father, but if they will not turn unto me and hearken unto my voice, I will suffer them. Yea, I will suffer my people or house of Israel that they shall go through among them and shall tread them down. And there shall be a salt that had lost its savor, which is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of my people or house of Israel. Verily, verily, I say unto you, thus hath the father commanded. Next page over. me that I should go give unto this people this land for their inheritance. And then the words of the prophet Isaiah shall be fulfilled, which say, Thy watchmen shall lift up their voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted, his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. Verse 20, 
The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. And that concludes the chapter. And I'll wrap up with my testimony. That I know the gathering of the house of Israel is real and it's ongoing. Those of us that are Gentiles and have received the fullness of the gospel, that have gained a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Book of Mormon is true. Now is the time for us to bring that knowledge to the Jews so they too can have a fullness of the gospel. I testify that the Bible and the Book of Mormon together gives us this fullness and thereby we know all that's available to us about the Savior to prepare us for his second coming. I know that he loves us and wants us to be reaching out to each other to serve other people, to testify of them so they can have the joy that only comes from his gospel. I leave you all with my testimony in the name of the great Jehovah, Jesus Christ. Amen.